Brooklyn Independent Television. Electrokinetics, electrospatial design, physical interaction design, and kinetic sculpture is mainly what I would describe myself as doing. Basically, arranging wires in three-dimensional space such that a circuit can function. When I was first starting off trying to figure out how I was going to make work that people would pay attention to that was worth making, that I could hopefully get money to make and get people behind, I thought a lot about um, the psychology of perception. So thinking about what things can people not help but pay attention to. And the list that I came up with were things that look like people, things that are big, things that light up, and things that move. So I kind of took those four characteristics and tried to think, okay, how can I combine those things? I really enjoy combining electronic media with organic materials as well. I'm trying to do so in a, a polished and elegant way. So this is, um, it's an array of white LEDs and they're diffused by different silkworm cocoons. Each one of these structures was made by one little insect and the fact that there's light radiating out of them is kind of like it's breathing this odd life back into them. When I was in college, I studied both fine arts and also economics, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do after school, but when it came time to figure out how I was gonna live on my own, I ended up deciding to go work on Wall Street because I couldn't figure out how to make any money with art. My strategy at the time was to make money in Wall Street and do really well um, until I was in my 30s and then quit and become an artist with the money I had saved. And I started to feel badly about my job. And I'm like, I have more energy now than I probably will ever have. So instead of trying to like save for my future life as an artist, I decided that I should just go for it. So I found out about a program at NYU called the Interactive Telecommunications Program. And what attracted me about that program was that I could learn more technical skills rather than the traditional art skills like uh, sculpting and painting and drawing. Um, I, I was worried that if I went to go and get an MFA in, in those disciplines that if I didn't make it as an artist I might have trouble making it in general. So I went back to school and I got really into electronic artwork which has led me to where I am today. The Firefly piece was my graduate thesis and it's kind of what launched me into becoming an artist. It's a wind sensitive LED display. It sounds really complicated, but it was actually really simple. It's a grid of many, many LEDs that's connected on one side to power, but the other side is just attached to a little hanging wire. And when the wind blows, it pushes that little wire, which touches a contact, turning on the LED. And as the wind blows over it, you get a very nice and real organic light display that basically is showing you the way that the air is blowing over the piece. I got hired to do a few music festivals, so basically I built a larger, more portable version of my thesis, so I made it into two by two foot panels that I could take apart and ship around. And then from there I started getting known a little bit more and just basically running down commissions, trying to meet as many people as I could, and I've been doing that for the past like two and a half years now. I've done a couple different uh, public art installations since then, and right now I'm working on a series of uh, permanent outdoor sculptures for a, a new park that's gonna be in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. In the final version, this will be laminated glass, probably one inch thick, and then this will be industrially rolled and welded steel or possibly aluminum. It'll probably be about nine feet tall. I need to figure out how to make it weatherized and make it durable, so that's largely what I'm working on now as well as going through final designs, talking with engineers about how to, how to realize this artwork. When I don't have a job at a particular time, you know, it's really up to me to set my own hours and to get myself out of bed and to do the work. And I often end up working really long hours um, because one of, the th one of the most challenging things about this is I never know whether I'm doing the right thing. Like, usually, you know, if I have a job and I'm getting paid, I know what I have to do. But in terms of developing my own career and trying to come up with strategy and figure out how to allocate 
my money to maybe hire somebody or to rent a space or something like that, I have to really be confident of, of what the decision is going to be. There's not much time in this profession to go down one road and then decide not, come back and go the other one. You can only do that so many times before you, you run out of money and you have to get a full-time job. I want to share my enthusiasm for discovery. I would really like to have people become more interested and feel more connected to electronic things. We assume that everything electronic gets produced in China or gets produced somewhere else and that it's behind this door, that it doesn't matter looking there or trying to figure it out. We're going to become totally disconnected from all of the devices and tools that we're using. There are a lot of observable cause and effect relationships that go on with electronics. Oftentimes what I'm working with, it's, it's simple on the small units, but then if you repeat it a thousand times, it's still simple to understand, but it's incredibly complex because it's been repeated. I really like working that way because it makes things transparent to the non-expert. It's hard because cell phones and computers, they are like black boxes. I mean, trying to open one up and look at how it works and figure it out is, is very unattainable, but at least the knowledge that that stuff is based on these other simpler things. One of the scariest things in working with electronic media is that you never know what the next thing to come out will be. And hopefully, if your work is, is smart enough, it goes beyond the media it's, itself and becomes relevant aside from the media. My hope is that within the next few years, I'll have a few artworks that I really stand by and that I feel are about the design and the idea more than just the media. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.